Now, something else that I've done, just to sort of, in terms, uh, is to um, take advantage of a variety of finding aids for my study, because if I'd been left to my own devices, I don't think I would have gotten very far at all. So I would like to um, see if... Oh, I know. Sorry. Um, I would like to sing the praises of this little CD, ROM, which is the entire back catalog for the journal Ulster Local Studies, which was the journal of the Federation for Ulster Local Studies. And you can get it for 20 quid from their website. And um, I think it's an absolute steal and a bargain because what I have found in here have been, I think, some of the best explanations of how to use local history sources um, that I've come across. Um, Trevor Parkle, um, in particular, has written two great articles, one on the Ordnance Survey maps and how to find them, and one on using valuation records. Um, and they're fantastic. They're very, very clear. Um, and so I would really recommend that because they have been hugely helpful. There's also lots of great stuff here on understanding the context for local history, like landowning and kinship and all these sorts of things that help you to sort of put your local study in context. Um, when I was out in Larne, again, I came across, you don't even need to see this, but I was on, it's on the blog if you like, and I'll leave it over here later on, is, is that the mid Antrim Museum Service is doing a similar lecture series to ours called Exploring Your Roots Family History Exhibition. And they're taking a very different approach to us in that they're looking at things like townlands and farming families and looking at more practical sort of source-based lectures and talks. But it's a very nice complement to, I think, what we're doing. So I'm hoping to get to that series. It's starting in Newton Abbey in, um, in, on the 16th of January and runs for sort of seven weeks thereafter. But it'll be up in Larne then in September. Something else as well that you might want to take advantage of is this, um, again, is a new thing that the local libraries are doing, and it's called LISC, L-I-S-C. And what it does is, is that if you're a member of your own local library, you can apply for a passport, and that passport then lets you have access to a variety of library collections across the north of Ireland. Some of them are quite specialized but others are really simply other libraries within your library board or within all library boards. So what that meant was is that I could go up to Larne Library and use their resources um, and, um, uh, and things. So, and again, just to sort of say that, um, oh, my apologies. Yeah, okay, there's Larne Library. And again, your local library is a fantastic place to go. Um, I found, quite a lot of useful bits and pieces, local publications that just wouldn't be held anywhere else. Larne also has a, muse a museum and the local heritage officer there, Jenny Caldwell, was fantastic. She says, oh, I think we have a file on Killwater. Oh, so she brought it out and it was this big stack of paper. And what happens, a little story, um, is that um, one of the last, uh, uh, I suppose, tenants of Kilwater Castle were, was the Galt Smith family. And the wife, Mrs. Galt Smith, was, um, Elizabeth, was an American. And her family owned extensive property in Wilmington, Delaware. And um, all of the, that house that her family owned has now been turned into a museum called Rockwood Museum. And of course, the Americans are always so much more proactive than we are. So they've been beavering away and phoning Larne and trying to tell them all about the many letters that they have and the photographs that they have from Kilwater Castle. And so what they've done is they've actually sent um, photocopies of interior photographs of Kilwater Castle. And as far as I know, nothing like that really exists here. So simply by looking through the local council file, you then get access to a whole range of other stuff. Not only that, but Elizabeth Galt Smith wrote extensive letters and corresponded back and forth with the states. So again, there's another lead that I'm hoping to explore. But one of the things that I wanted to do when I started out with the project, and I'm gonna finish off very quickly, I promise, is to say that um, 
was to find out a little bit about, if you remember, about my family postcard. Okay. Now, you can, right? And this was my family postcard um, from my unnamed relative who is just talking um, about general family items to um, uh, uh, my great grandmother. And um, at the bottom of the correspondence, um, he says, um, they have the school nearly built. And so I wondered about this. And again, the date of it is August 23rd, 1913. So, there's the school. I found the school. So it's just sort of a nice, again, if you've got a family, postcard that gives you that kind of a hook then you can chase that up in your local area okay and this is right across the street from the deserted factory and of course what you can't see is the 25 foot high is growing out of the front garden of the school and um, and this kind of thing because it's kind of derelict but way at the little lozenge up at the top there says 1913 so um, so those are the kind of things that I've been exploring um, I'm hoping to get to look at um, some of the poverty and industry records in the next while. Um, and again, there's Larne Hospital, which is the former workhouse. Um, so um, I think Stephen's going to come up now and talk a bit about some of the industrial records that I might be lucky enough to get access to um, in my research over the next wee while.